Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over to Desto with Gideon Entrotter, who's going to talk today about in-memory computing. Gideon, we've been hearing about in-memory compute for a number of years. As a matter of fact, it probably goes back a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. It's starting to become real. What's changed? I think that what's actually made the, the difference is the introduction of some new memory technologies that make it um, more possible to implement this in-memory computing. Uh, that's one side of the equation. The other side of the equation is the fact that uh, AI is becoming more and more interesting. And this in-memory computing concept can actually uh, make AI computing um, much faster and much uh, allow uh, doing it with uh, significant and less power. And the whole idea here that's been causing the problem is that we just have so much data to move back and forth, right? So it's easier to, instead of moving the data to the memory, why not move the processing to the memory? Yes, that's part of the issue. Uh, a lot of the current and the time is spent on moving the data from the memory into the computational engines. The other part of the equation is that these computational engines that are uh, doing the computing in uh, a digital fashion are quite expensive in power consumption and also take some time to process. So both the memory movement and the computation itself uh, could be uh, dramatically uh, improved by moving the operations directly into the memory and doing the operations in a in analog fashion. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. So Gideon, what are we looking at here? So the basic operation of uh, you know, AI computation is uh, a vector matrix uh, multiplication. So you take a vector of inputs and multiply it by the vectors, the uh, vertical vectors in a matrix. So pretty much what you do, the operation is take this value times that value, keep going like that, and add all of them up to pretty much perform this sigma operation that we have here. So in order to do that with a digital design, what you need to do is bring each and every one of these vector uh, elements into the processing uh, unit and then do the multiplication and then later on or in parallel uh, sum it all up. One of the advantages of what you're doing here is you're actually increasing the density of what you're doing at any point, right? So the data is not just an individual bit, you're multiplying groups of bits. Yes, you're multiplying groups of bits and, and many of these bits actually are used just one time throughout the operation. So just bringing them over to the CPU, uh, there's no way of taking advantage of caching techniques to keep, for example, this in the in the processor because the typical matrix will be huge. It wouldn't fit into an instruction cache or a data cache. And you will uh, just be wasting power bringing it up into the CPU. Then the next thing around is going and bringing the other one. And there's really no simple way of uh, reducing the power consumption or the time to bring these into the microprocessor. So where do we go from here? How much can you improve this going forward and what do you do next? Okay, so uh, the thing that uh, uh, the whole industry is researching right now is how to do this computation in an analog fashion directly within the memory device, uh, thereby eliminating the need to bring this uh, data to the uh, microprocessor do the, and do the uh, multiply and add operation. And that is done by a circuit like the one we're showing here. So what are we looking at in this part of the drawing? So what we're seeing here, let's start uh, focusing first on these uh, resistors that we see here. Each of these resistors is representing a single storage cell in the memory. Uh, the storage cell, instead of uh, storing just ones and zero, they're storing an analog uh, value. And by storing an analog value and having some uh, uh, resistance that is directly related to the value that you want to store, we can actually do the computation within the memory rather than having uh, to take this and, and uh, bring it into the microprocessor and do the computation. What sort of problems do you run into as you're trying to get this done? Okay, so there's a lot of science fiction in this, uh, in, in implementing this. Today, storage devices 
are designed to store just ones and zeros. Uh, what we want to do is be able to store values that are analog values with a number of bits uh, of accuracy, say six to maybe 12 bits of accuracy. Uh, if, and doing that is, has been done in, in labs, but it's not done in anything that is close to uh, capability of scaling it to the largest uh, sizes of matrix operations that we need, and obviously uh, bringing it to a level that it could be productized in a, a repeatable fashion. What kind of memory is this that you're talking about? So the best memory for this is uh, resistive RAM. It does have the dynamic range that is required for that uh, type of operation. Atesto has been building uh, resistive RAM devices a little bit for uh, digital uh, storage. Uh, for many years, we were the first company to introduce uh, resistive RAM products. And uh, taking this type of memory and turning it to, to an analog uh, device, that's something that is uh, quite an undertaking. And hopefully within a number of years, the industry will see products that are capable of uh, storing values in an analog fashion. Then you need to build the circuits around them to turn them into this uh, computer like we're showing in this uh, diagram here. In the digital world, the big problem has always been increasing the density. So you're always moving to the next node. What's the problem in the analog world? So unfortunately, with the analog world, you need to deal with all the problems of the digital world plus. So density is a big issue, of course, uh, in order to do computation that are, uh, you know, making sense, you need to, to store tens of megabits or hundreds of megabits on chip and maybe even more. And then in addition to that, you need to have this re uh, capability of storing an analog value in the device and actually retrieving that analog value from the device in a, in a, in a solid fashion. What's the endurance of a, an analog type of uh, memory versus a digital memory? So digital memory, we're used to thinking these things will last for years. Analog, we have no idea. Right. I think uh, your question says it all. Uh, we have no idea. Nobody knows yet how far this could be taken. Uh, there is no need to store the data for such a long time. Uh, in a digital world, we see customers that need us to store the value for 10 years and sometimes even 20 years think about the automotive industry, you don't want your microcontroller that controls your brakes to forget its program, uh, uh, you know, five years after you bought the car. Uh, in the analog world or here, it's probably not that critical because you can refresh these, the values that sit in these uh, uh, memory cells once in a while, uh, but uh, you still need it to be stable for a reasonable amount of time. When we talk about AI systems, there are, oh, some of the new chips that are being built are looking at orders of magnitude improvement in terms of performance. Uh, is this going to offer that, that kind of improvement as well? Yes, yes. That, that's the premise. We obviously, uh, I don't think anybody has solved the problem yet, uh, but the premise is there. We're talking about uh, circuits that consume a fraction of the power and a fraction of the uh, uh, time to do the same amount of computation. Same design tools that get used for other circuits, would be, would that, that apply here or is there something completely new that's required? Very, very good question. Uh, depending on what type of part of the design. So first part of the design of any AI system is actually coming up with the values that need to be stored in this uh, in these resistors. Pretty much these are the same values that would have been stored in a traditional uh, digital uh, uh, circuit. Uh, so in that respect, the, all the good work that the data science, uh, uh, sci data scientists actually are working on today, they will be able to reuse all the, the work that they have done until now, all the same algorithms. In terms of circuit design, there's a lot of new stuff that needs to be implemented, especially in the area of the cell itself, the memory cell itself. Around the memory cell, we're talking about techniques that exist today, A to Ds, D to As, uh, these are all traditional circuits and I think that what we have today would probably do the job. So standard CMOS, nothing changes there? 
Uh, it starts with a standard CMOS. Resistive RAM is actually, that's one of the big advantage of a resistive RAM. Uh, resistive RAM uh, can be implemented uh, very, very uh, effectively on top of a standard CMOS process. Uh, by adding just a few extra steps to the process, uh, you can add a resistor uh, into the uh, into the die. Uh, so in that respect, the standard CMOS and all the advances advances with standard CMOS technology, all of these can be taken advantage of. So rather than uh, doing an individual computation every single time and even recalling uh, the, what you've done before, now what you're doing is looking at the entire operation, right? Yes. This this machine is completely parallel. What it does is it takes this operation that we were talking about earlier, which is an iterative operation. It's a do loop uh, where you go through every one of these elements, bring it to memory, could uh, perform the multiplication and sum the result. Here you do this whole operation in a single instance. You just bring in all the new, all the values to the these D2As and then within the, all these uh, resistors are actually creating or, or passing current that's relative to that value and then the A to D looks at the results and the result here is pretty much the sum of the uh, dot matrix of, uh, multiplications. We've pretty much gone off the scaling roadmap here in order to do this, right? So you're not getting your benefit out of scaling, you're getting it out of doing an architectural change. Correct, absolutely, yeah. Gideon and Trotter, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you very much.